So in this video, I'm going to discuss why people from the US or let's say Saudi Arabia or the UAE are so crazy about the Guatemala passport, the Guatemala citizenship. What is so special about Guatemala? I'm going to cover some insights from on the ground. And then I'm also going to cover how this compares with, let's say, a Mexican passport. And should you collect the Guatemala option or should you rather stick to the Mexican option? But before we deep dive in this important distinction, I first had something very important to share. And it's because you are directly responsible for making it happen. And it is the YouTube play button that we just received for blasting to 100k subscribers. Thanks to you, we are now the third biggest channel in this niche. I'm going to quickly unbox this and show you what's inside. And it has a, the famous letter from YouTube congratulating you and this is what it looks like. So finally, that is the YouTube play button for reaching a thousand subs. So it's real shiny and beautiful. So thank you so much for subscribing. Another interesting fact is that the Nomad Capitalist does not have the golden play button. He talks about golden options, but he's still to get there. Now, if you like golden options and you haven't subscribed to this channel, I request you to please subscribe so we get there sooner than anyone else does and we can get you even more valuable insights, options, tips, tricks, and hacks. That out of the way, Let's talk about Guatemala. Let's come back to Guatemala. Why is this such an exciting option? First and foremost, the passport is beautiful. It's a very unique blue. You want to have something like that in your portfolio. Apart from that, it's a solid, strong Latin document. You have excellent access. This is particularly very good for someone who values the C4 access. C4 is four countries. El Salvador, the Bitcoin nation. Guatemala, of course, the country of citizenship. Honduras has Prospera, something very unique, very interesting. It also has Nicaragua. I have a segment of people who specifically love Nicaragua for various reasons. So you have this packed, a compact association of C4 countries. Guatemala could be your entry pass to C4 privileges. My personal fascination with Guatemala has to do with the pockets. I have visited several pockets from immigration offices to the main city to Antigua to other places of Guatemala and I absolutely love spending time in Guatemala. It's by far one of my favorite places for plan B. So let's say times are rocky, times are hard. You want to be in Guatemala, you want to be in Antigua where you can enjoy your life king style. It's very flexible. You can drive around in ATVs. You can hop around different bars. You have Americans, Canadians, and Italians, and Middle Eastern, everyone jam-packed in the same location, enjoying their life, having a beautiful time with their family in Guatemala. So for those reasons, I think it only makes sense for someone to be interested in Guatemala. First, let's discuss why Americans look for something like a Guatemala. Americans have this fascination with Latin America. They want to have all those options, right? Latin America has so many countries. These countries encourage Americans or they entice Americans with options, residency options, pathways to citizenship. They want you to spend your money, right? They're very cheap, very affordable. So when you bring your cash, when you bring those dollars from the US, you're going to afford twice, thrice, or even four times what you would otherwise afford in the US. They're going to give you a king style lifestyle. So you're going to have a good life when you're spending time in Latin America is learning Spanish once and you're done with your requirements for so many of these exotic gems. Plus, with the whole CBT situation, Americans want to be prepped when the bad time strikes. You have other nationalities. You have other passports, let's say you want to retire. And if you have a few options within Latin America's, you're pretty solid, secure. Now, why do people from Saudi Arabia or Dubai, UAE, why are they looking for a citizenship in Latin America, specifically Guatemala or Mexico? Why are they seeking such options? Well, they're looking for such options because they sit on a thin sheet of paper. 
What I mean is they have passports from countries like Nigeria, Sudan, Pakistan, Nepal. So those are the type of countries and there are some other ones too, right? And people know what I'm talking about. So there are some of those countries with pathetic third world passports. The countries are not pathetic. The passports are pathetic. The access is pathetic. So when they are sitting in Dubai enjoying this great, beautiful life, they're successful, smart, intelligent people, working businessmen, their families are well to do. They're rich and wealthy, but they still suffer a horrible situation where they just can't think of going back to their third world home country the situation is not right and if anything bad happens and Dubai Saudi Arabia these countries are getting westernized they're following the minimum tax rules and they're making some changes so things that happened before it's not necessary you're going to enjoy the same privileges anything can go wrong in today's crazy times and if something goes wrong the countries are becoming more and more and more strict if bad time hits you can't really look at or think about going to Sudan or Nigeria or Pakistan, right, for that matter. You want to be protected. You want to have a good, solid citizenship. It's a matter of respect. You have the money. You have the capability. Why not have a good citizenship? You deserve a good citizenship. And that's where a lot of these people are realizing. And a big impact is my videos. I really have helped connect that part of the world with the Latin world. And that's your bridge. We specialize, we have attorneys, and my focus has been to get you the privilege as soon as possible. One of the fastest ways is to get the Mexican residency card in one day. Yes, we are able to accomplish that, and that's been one of our biggest success factors. If you want to learn how this is even possible, you can watch this video. I've covered this extensively. Now, let's get back to Guatemala. What are the options? The problem with Guatemala that you're going to hit is that initially you got to put your time inside Guatemala. So let's say you enter Guatemala, you want to be, you want to stabilize yourself. Uh, it'll take some time for immigration to process. It's not that magical one day process, like say compared to Mexico. So if you're willing to put some time on the ground, then you can obviously apply for your residency. The qualifying criteria is one of the lowest in the world. You're looking at 1250 USD approximately to qualify in income. This has to be qualifying income which is your passive income so if you have that then guatemala offers some exotic exclusive pockets really beautiful places elite places where you can establish and good luck for someone trying to find you in guatemala i think it's going to be extremely challenging for anyone looking for you there right so you have your private getaway it's a beautiful place you can't go wrong with guatemala if you really don't have that much time to spend inside of guatemala then your best bet is mexico as i said the one day process the biggest difference between let's say a guatemala and a mexico is that the qualifying income requirements are active for mexico instead of passive for guatemala so let's say you have a rental income passive income fixed deposits, interest, and any of that kind of stuff that doesn't really depend upon your salary, then you can definitely look at Guatemala as an option. And if you're looking for using your active income to qualify for the Mexican residency, which then can eventually lead to citizenship, both are flexible options, right? The main point of comparison was the flexibility. So the flexibility is there with both. You don't have to quit everything and move there right now when the right time strikes. You simply put in some minimum physical presence before you apply for citizenship and then you can qualify for either option. So let's say you have this active salary, you go for Mexico. Let's say you have a passive salary, you could look at both. And at any point you have any confusion or any questions regarding either process, we have solid attorneys in both places. You can always reach us. We can have a quick chat. We can see which one fits your criteria. Maybe you like both. We can choose and get you started on the option of your choice. The other point of comparison is the connectivity, right? Between Mexico and Guatemala. I think of Mexico is far better connected to the US, to Canada. So in that sense, I would rate Mexico slightly higher over here. When you compare that with Guatemala, it does have good connectivity, but you have to, again, where you're coming from, you might have to hop a few flights here and there. You might be looking at a couple of layovers. So in that sense, Mexico wins hands down. When it comes to the access, now Guatemala obviously gets you the C4 access eventually. So that is a big plus point you have four countries under your belt once you become a guatemalan with mexico you have more advantages towards north america the biggest one is a lot of people would qualify for eta to canada 
It used to be visa free, but they've changed the rules slightly. Nonetheless, you have good connections with Canada. And then let's say you want to go to the US, there's a direct path, the TN path. This is a huge option, only exclusively available to a couple of countries in North America. It's with Canada and the second country is Mexico. A lot of people aren't aware that Mexico offers a TN access to the US. This is far better than any E2, EB5, any H1, none of that nonsense, right? This is a direct access, a TN access. If you have any kind of job, qualifying job in the US, you can simply apply for the TN visa. The other big advantage with the Mexican passport is the APEC advantage. A lot of Australians for that reason absolutely go for Mexico as an option because with APEC you have business access. Now this is exclusive to the Mexican passport along with those 19 other countries. US and Canada are not on the list of full APEC members. Mexico is. So you have direct business access to Australia, New Zealand, South Korea, Malaysia, Singapore, Japan, Russia, and the list just goes on. All the useful countries are packed in that APEC along with the Mexican passport. So if you enjoy connections to the West, you really wanna be heavily armed with good, meaningful access, business access, then Mexico is slightly highly rated. If you are someone who really values that Central or South American access, the C4 access, then Guatemala makes a lot of sense. For the crazy savvy person, both options make a lot of sense because then you have all the Western coverage and then you also have a lot of the C4 Latin coverage. What you also should look at or consider or think, and this is not immigration advice, just my opinion and thoughts, you should also look at the Mercosur citizenship. That's very important. Having a Mercosur residency that quietly sneaks in or sneaks through and gets you the Mercosur passport, then you have the C4, you have the Mercosur, you have the North American, everything is pretty much covered. And as I said, at any point, we can discuss and get you started with whichever option that gets you the structure, that is the job, that is the portfolio that we help our clients build. Again, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, support us, subscribe. And I recently had a chat with the godfather of .ai. If you are someone who's interested in the British, full British citizenship, you don't want to directly go there. You want to make a property purchase, sneak into Angola, and then let's say have that as a plan B pocket. The citizenship that you collect from there eventually leads to the British citizenship. And if you're going to hear this from someone who has actually done this on the ground, physically a living proof of this, and the government really extracts half, almost half, and they're looking at two thirds of their budget from this guy, what he does with the dot AI, it's boomed, and it's only going up, up, and up. If you haven't seen that interview, make sure to hop onto this video. Here's where Wince, who also appeared on Nomad Capitalist, talks about his journey in a lot of detail. All right, catch you in this one.